Hey guys, and welcome to my Croesus One Cycle Guide for Teams. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. To do this boss properly, you're going to want to have at least level 80 plus fishing, mining, woodcutting, and hunter. Having access to bladed dive and double surge is useful, but it's not required. Using a power boost of acceleration in combination with bladed dive will make this boss even easier. Protein logs are going to be extra useful as you can stack a bunch of them in your inventory and you're going to be using them for a single mechanic. Having cinder banes and weapon poison plus 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 does work on the middle section of the boss, although I'm not sure if this is a bug or not. Having access to crystal tools, skilling outfits and all that kind of stuff will be useful but again isn't required. Something that is required are super restores as your stats will be drained during the fight. You can get there using the PVM hub portal or alternatively you'll have to walk all the way there from using the archaeology journal and going into the city of St. Tiston and then following the video as seen. Once inside you can actually choose between a public instance or a private instance with your own group. In this guide, I will be focusing on an 8-man group, although you can easily do this with a 4 or 5-man group as well. The arena consists of 4 different skilling locations, which you can teleport to by using Gorvek. The boss encounter is only started once you actually start the encounter by clicking on the boss in the middle. Each skilling section has a main section you need to deplete of resources, being the one located around the boss. Once these are completely depleted, you want to focus on the dead guards instead to get your remaining resources. The amount of resources you need depend on your group size. So, as a reminder, the main resources are the ones located around each dead boss, being the Dagonoff King, Crassian Leviathan, Araxor, and so on. During the bossing encounter, when you're running around the arena, you want to pay attention to these two fields. The first being the mushrooms or agility thing. You only want to cross using the mushrooms that have a glowing bubbly effect, otherwise you'll take damage in the form of stat drain and enrage the boss. The other field is what I would like to call the minefield, as you need to avoid all of these plant things, because otherwise your stats will be drained and unlike the other mechanics, you can actually get killed or knocked out before your stats reach zero. Not sure why, but it happens because the hits are so rapid. During the boss fight, the boss will bombard you with various smoke bombs, which when they hit you will also drain your stats and enrage the boss. You can avoid these by simply bladed diving out of them or by simply moving out of the way. The same can be said for this fairy ring mechanic, which you can see coming. If you stand still for too long, it will teleport you to a different plot or quadrant. The small purple bomb attack will stun you for about four or five seconds, but you can use freedom to get out of it. Another mechanic is the sticky fungus, which will randomly spawn underneath you and stun you. Other players can actually save you, but you can also save yourself by simply clicking on it on the floor and lighting a fire. This is why I recommend bringing along protein logs. The final mechanic you want to watch out for when walking around the arena is the attacking orange bomb. If it manages to hit you, it will not only drain your stats, but also enrage the boss a little bit more. Occasionally in the middle of the boss fight, the energy fungus mechanic will start and these must be skilled to death by clicking on them once. Otherwise, the boss will add about 40 40% in rage if not killed in time. It doesn't seem to matter where you finish these off as the health pool is shared. This mechanic can be skipped by finishing the statues in time which we'll talk about in just a second. Before we go into how to actually kill the boss you need to know that enrage goes up over time and the more mistakes you'll make the faster it will go up. At 100% enrage there's probably no chance of you killing the boss unless you're already attacking the core because after that you will die. Now that I've quickly gone over all the mechanics you might encounter and might want to avoid let's talk about how you kill this boss with a team of 8 players. Alright, so we have four different skilling plots or quadrants. If you're with eight players, you want to put two players in each single quadrant. In each quadrant, there's this statue that needs to be repaired using 15 of two different resources, being either the fishing, hunter, woodcutting, or mining resources. These can be seen on screen now. So, to repeat, you're going to need, for example, in the northwestern corner to repair one statue, 15 fishing, and 15 mining resources. If you're going to do this with a team of 8 players, this means that each player should be responsible for just 15 resources. For example, if we take the Hunter location, me and another player were responsible for filling up the statue in the southwest corner and the southeast corner. This is the same way you should communicate with your team beforehand before starting the fight as to who is going to fill up which statue. 
But there's a little more you need to know, because you simply can't grab 15 resources and run towards the other side unless you do it perfectly. That is because your resources can rot if you mess up some of the walking mechanics, including the mushrooms part. But that doesn't matter since you're going to want to deplete the main three skilling nodes around each of those bosses in each quadrant or plot anyways before you run towards the other side. So deplete the three main skilling nodes with the other player in your quadrant, then go ahead and grab some more resources from the dead guards if needed because you're going to want to have about 18, and then move towards the other quadrant where you need to go to prepare the statue. After that, you're going to want to grab a total of 10 resources, it doesn't matter which, and left click them to rot them because you're going to use those 10 rotted pieces to extend the duration of your life basically by using it on the main skilling nodes of the boss. Finally, once your teammates have used their resources on the statues as well, you can repair these or construct these statues, but you don't want to click prey just yet. Preying on the statues will actually open up the boss's core, allowing you to attack its insides. You want to do this in sync with the other three quadrants so that you have the most amount of time and you're able to one cycle the boss without having to worry about the other statues. I know this might all seem confusing, but once it starts to make sense, it's actually really simple as long as you have a coordinated team of eight people. If you're with four people, you simply have to gather double the amount of resources and it's going to take slightly longer, but the strategy is the same. Players are responsible for repairing their part of the statue. If you don't do it in sync, you can still kill the boss, but it won't be in sync as when the timer runs out from one statue, for example, you'll get kicked out of its core. Alright, let's go over a full uncut kill. So I start off the kill by gathering my hunter resources as I need to do one of the statues that requires hunter. I try to avoid the attacks by moving around as they will drain my stats and enrage the boss. We're with 9 people but we're still going to be doing the same 8 man tactics where each person is responsible for at least 15 resources. To make sure we have enough time to kill the boss we're going to focus on depleting these skilling nodes around the dead Dagonov King. We do this by avoiding all the main mechanics until these resources are depleted. At that point, you probably won't have more than 15 resources, so you want to go ahead and move on the guards. You're going to be gathering from these guards until you have around 18 resources. As you can see, I just got stunned by the purple bomb, but we're just going to use freedom and keep on continuing to gather. As you can see, my teammate already has his 18 resources, so he's going to the other side, to his own quadrant, where he's going to add those to the statue. Now that I have more than enough resources, I'm also going to be crossing the field. I use my power burst of acceleration and I use bladed dive multiple times to avoid the plants. Oh, little mistake there, but that's no problem. I add my 15 resources to the statue. I rot my remaining resources by clicking on them and I start gathering immediately to get the other remaining rotted pieces. Remember that it does not matter which resource you gather because you can rot every single one in the arena. Once you have 10, if you're the dedicated rotter, you're going to rot the main skilling nodes around the boss, in this case around Araxor. As you can see, it clearly reduces the blue bar and gives us more time to kill off the boss. I immediately start by constructing the statue together with my buddy here. But then the energy fungus spawns. Everyone in the entire arena needs to get on these ASAP. While doing this, I'm communicating with my team in voice chat as to how far our statue is because we want to pray all at the same time to give us a huge amount of time to one cycle the boss. This may take some time, it might not be the most efficient method, but this does mean you're going to get a safe, guaranteed kill. Once everyone is almost ready or basically ready and we can start preying on our statues in sync, we do so and open up the middle. After that, we're obviously going to hop into the middle and get going and start to finish off the boss because this is the part of the fight where you can actually damage the boss and apparently poison it if you're using Cinder Banes and Weapon Poison++. Plus plus plus. Now, you can also heal the boss, but I'm not entirely sure why. I think it has something to do with the particles and if that happens, you may want to move to the other side. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it doesn't seem to matter if you've got all four statues active as you have enough time to DPS down the boss and get your kill and then go to the chest and loot. And that's all you need to know to take down this boss safely in one cycle. Please keep in mind that this is a day of release guide and it will not include all of the details you might know about six months from now. But it's probably useful to you and since so many people are clueless in public instances, I hope this should help players out that can't find a dedicated team.
If it did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.